Were you aware at the time that in addition to making fake bombs, the FBI had been recruiting Mr. Fayed for 18 months? No, ma'am. That he has no history of violence, no history of terrorist affiliation? He doesn't know that. He has no evidence indicating he's ever Object. had any interest in terrorism. Prior Objection! To recruited by this team of agents? No, ma'am. Hey, Legal Eagles, it's time to think like a lawyer. Today we're covering a show called For the People. I don't know anything about this show, but it was highly requested by you out there, so keep those recommendations coming. I'm always looking for new portrayals of lawyers and courtrooms in the media. As always, be sure to comment in the form of an objection, which I will either sustain or overrule. And while you're there, let me know what movie or TV show I should do next. And of course, stick around until the end of this video, where I give the first episode of For the People a grade for legal realism. So, without further ado, let's dig into the first episode of For the People. All right, New York. It's always New York for some reason. Ah, uh, the famous New York Supreme Court. Oh, that's a, that's a different courthouse. Oh, that is the Riverside, California courthouse. I know that courthouse very well, both the New York one and the California one. There are two great courts in America, the Supreme Court and the one you're sitting in right now. This is the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York, the oldest, most prestigious, highest profile trial court in America. I don't know if the SDNY is the oldest U.S court. I would think that it was created at the same time as the other district courts, but there's no doubt that the Southern District of New York is one of the most high-profile federal courts in the United States. There is a ton of high-profile litigation that goes on in the Southern District of New York because that is where New York City is, so there are a lot of high-profile cases there. So it is not an exaggeration to say that it is one of the most prestigious places to be an assistant U.S. attorney or a federal public defender. This is the court that heard claims over the sinking of the Titanic. This is the court that heard the case against the Rosenbergs. Aaron Burr was a lawyer in this court. You want to claim Aaron Burr? The cases are hard, the stakes are high, the lawyers on the other side are better than you, and the judges are smarter than you. Some of you won't succeed. Some of you are not worthy. But for those of you who are, your time here will be the highlight of your career. All right, that's not a crazy speech to be given by a judge at a swearing-in ceremony. That's, uh, I, I can imagine that actually happening in real life. So, so help me God. Welcome to the Mother Court. And they're walking out of the Supreme Court, the State Court, I think. That's funny. So interestingly, this takes place in federal court, not state court, the way that law and order does. Law and order takes place entirely within the state court. But the federal courts exist for two reasons. Number one, there are federal laws. As you may know, there are two types of law in the United States. There are those that are created by the state governments, and there are the laws that are created by the federal government. Sometimes there's overlap, sometimes there isn't. But if you have a case that deals specifically with uh, federal law and federal jurisdiction, you're going to be litigating your case in the federal courts. And then additionally, especially if you're on the civil side, you'll deal with what's called diversity jurisdiction, where if you have defendants who are citizens of different states, the federal courts were designed to handle litigation amongst different states and among citizens of different states to make sure that everyone gets a fair shake. But this looks like it's gonna be a criminal show because we're dealing with the federal prosecutors and the federal public defenders. So that leads me to believe that this show is probably dealing exclusively with federal criminal law as opposed to civil law. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jill Carlin. I'm the federal public defender. Inside these envelopes is your first case. And let me warn you, you're not gonna win. You're up against the United States government and the government almost always wins because they have all the power. <laughs> Some truth to that. So the advice that this head public defender is giving them, while a little cynical, is probably pretty accurate. You're probably not gonna take a lot of these things to trial, you're probably not gonna go to the mat on a lot of these cases, but you're going to plead, you're gonna give these people the best defense you possibly can, even if that results in guilty pleas down the line. 
What's duty? The attorney on duty picks up the new cases that come in. Do you need someone today? Yes, but you have to have some experience to be on duty, Sandra. I have experience. You have experience clerking on the Supreme Court, which is great experience for being a justice on the Supreme Court. It doesn't have anything to do with this job. I'll put you on duty when you're ready. I'm ready. Yes, that is accurate. If you clerk for the Supreme Court, that is the most prestigious thing you could possibly do. It's a huge star on your record, but it doesn't mean you necessarily have on the ground experience, although some people do have experience before they clerk for the Supreme Court. But it would not be a Shonda Rhimes legal TV show if there wasn't someone that clerked for the Supreme Court. It shows up in all of her shows for some reason. Why would I give you his case? Because a farm animal could win this case, and that case actually matters. And if it matters, you should give it to me. When I was clerking on the Supreme Court, <laughs> Another Supreme Court clerk, wow. Is that true? Leonard doesn't think you're ready for this case. Well, he's right. Neither one of us is ready for a case like this, but I'm at least humble enough to recognize it and I'll work that much harder because of it. I've never been a fan of humility. It's so ridiculous. Also, where are their supervising attorneys? You're not gonna handle a terrorism case on your first day as an AUSA, that's ridiculous. Do a good job on your new case and you'll get recognized because you're good and decent and you do things the right way, which is what matters in the long run, okay? Okay? <laughs> now I have to go because I have my first appearance as an attorney in the Southern District of New York. First appearance, it's your first day. What's the charge? 18 U.S.C. 2332A3. You picked this up on duty? Yes. Good thing to be on duty. 2332A3 is attempted. Attempted use of a weapon of mass destruction against any property that is owned, leased, or used by the United States or by any department or agency of the United States. I know. No, you don't. That's ridiculous that anyone would have encyclopedic knowledge uh, of the entire U.S. code just memorized like that. The entire U.S. code is bigger than all of those books put together. And it is ridiculous for, to expect that anyone would have the code section memorized, even just the criminal law sections memorized. It's preposterous. Your Honor, as alleged in the complaint, Madeline Lacarno was an administrative assistant at Alaria Pharmaceuticals and illegally traded on inside information regarding a merger between Alaria and Biogen. Excuse me, Your Honor, but the complaint actually does not allege that. It alleges that Ms. Lacarno passed on information to her ex-husband, who executed the trades, facts which we deny. What was the value of the trades? $9,325.54, Your Honor. $9,000? This is what Roger Gunn is prioritizing in the U.S. Attorney's Office nowadays? <laughs> so unlike most shows I've seen, they were actually arguing with the judge behind counsel table, which is generally where you're going to be arguing. You're not going to be wandering inside of the well like you see on TV. So that kind of colloquy is probably something you would see in real life. And a judge is likely to get upset about a matter that is taking up the government's time uh, over just $9,000. That's a very small case. So it, I would expect the judge to be annoyed by that. If they're offering a deal like that in a case like this, there must be something wrong with the evidence. Maybe. But if you want to find out, you're going to have to reject the offer. And if you reject the offer, you're going to trial. And if you go well, to trial, you're maybe. going to lose. Well, a also maybe. In a big case, I can give it to someone else. No. Just because you reject a plea deal early on in the case doesn't mean that that plea deal will no longer be available throughout the rest of the case. This particular case is probably going to take a year or two before it even gets to trial. There will be months, if not years, of litigation, and it would not be insane to reject the first plea deal, especially when you haven't even talked to your client yet. So she's not really in a position to know whether the plea deal is good or bad at this point. So of course, uh, if there's a choice, she's going to have to reject it. And by the way, she's gonna to have to talk to her client about whether to accept or reject the plea deal too. So I understand the cynicism from the head PD here that you're just trying to plead these things down, but you can't do that on your first day when you don't know any of the facts in this situation. Are you okay? I'm gonna do this. You know how we've always said... That is a really nice apartment in New York. You rejected a plea deal without talking to me. You said talk to my client, I talked to my client. Well, you didn't talk to me and that was a mistake. And you can't afford to make mistakes like that on a job like this. Yeah, you really need to talk to your supervising attorney there. That's, uh, that's a big deal right there. Well, Kate, here's the problem for you. My client, and let's keep it simple and call him Adam Dial, couldn't have committed the alleged fraud because 
as you probably have tabbed there in one of your binders, fraud requires an intent to deceive. And Adam didn't Oh no, to not deceive the mens rea argument. Because he actually believes all this is real. Crazy? Possibly. But the upshot is no intent, no crime. He is technically right. I assume that the crime of fraud is probably similar to the civil requirements for fraud, which do require an intent to deceive or a knowing falsity of uh, the representations that one makes. That being said, that is a very, very difficult argument to make, especially given that there will be other circumstantial evidence, like the fact that he took all of the money from the people that he defrauded and used it for his own purposes. You don't have to necessarily bring a psychologist in. You can just say that, well, he took the money from these people that he defrauded, and therefore that shows that he had the required mental state, and that's probably going to carry the day. Good luck in court, man. Yeah, he's buying the whole thing. Yeah, everything, that's what I'm saying. The bureau, the technology upgrade. Yeah, I've got full primal fear on him. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a real tool. <laughs> Tab four of my discovery guide. Request jailhouse recordings. Nice. That is 100% accurate. When you make a phone call in jail, unless it's to your lawyer, that is definitely discoverable. In fact, most jails have a warning that says your phone call will be recorded. So you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy and you should be on notice that your phone calls are going to be recorded and they can be used against you. This is a little bit dramatic, but definitely could happen. I just don't understand why we're prosecuting a case like this against a secretary for a $9,000 trade. Well, that is a problem that you don't understand. That. So. Let me spell it out for you. You're prosecuting the case because I told you to. I told you to prosecute the case because that secretary broke the law. Every now and then, regular Fair enough. people need to be reminded that there's serious consequences to breaking the law, whatever the law inside of trading, yeah, taxes, absolutely. stop signs. People start doing whatever the hell they feel like. Our whole system breaks down. Cars crash. Markets crash. People get hurt. Yeah, and it'll piss off the judge, but he's absolutely right. A crime is a crime, and just because it's a small amount doesn't mean that it shouldn't go unpunished. What, what is this extra paper stuffed in your back? You should always carry a lot of paper. They get worried you have something they don't know about. <laughs> That's clever. This case is about attempt, and you can't prove attempt because he was arrested before he got to the Statue of Liberty. Attempt only requires the defendant to take a substantial yeah. step toward the commission of a crime. Very he true. Liberty Island with a bomb. Then why was the plan always to wait to arrest him until he got to the crown? Because that's what you thought you needed to prove attempt. They're young, they're hungry, they're smart. Let them fight it out. Now, the prosecutors are right. You can have an attempted crime with really just minimal actions taken toward uh, the final act of the crime itself. So taking what he thought was a bomb to Liberty Island would absolutely qualify as a attempted terrorism here. You know you're part of an important tradition in my life. Go to trial tomorrow. Going to trial tomorrow? What? Have years passed since his first day? Are you nervous? Is it that spicy? The trial. Are you nervous about the trial? No. I'm not. I'm gonna win. <laughs> How many trials have you done if you clerked for the Supreme Court? Probably zero. And where is his team of other lawyers, too? You're not gonna go to trial with just one person on a terrorism case in the Southern District of New York. Please, tell the jury what happened that morning. Well, I saw this young man come off the ferry carrying a camera. He was sweating, jittery. I asked to see his camera, and that's when I realized it was a bomb. A fake bomb made by the FBI. I didn't know that at the time. Were you aware at the time that in addition to making fake bombs, the FBI had been recruiting Mr. Fayed for 18 months? No, ma'am. Uh, she can't really ask those questions of this witness. This witness is a precipient witness to what happened on the day that the defendant was arrested. So all of the stuff that happened before he got there is totally irrelevant for this witness. He has no personal knowledge of that, and he can't really opine or testify about those precipient facts. This is the wrong witness to ask those questions. Were you aware at the time that in addition to making fake bombs, the FBI had been recruiting Mr. Fayed for 18 months? No, ma'am. That he has no history of violence, no history of terrorist affiliation? He doesn't know that. has no evidence indicating he's ever Object. had any interest in terrorism. Prior Objection! To recruited by this team of agents? No, ma'am. You remember Mr. Fayed well, sir? Yes. Hmm, really? How long have you worked on that ferry? 19 years. 19 years, and how many ferries a day? 
25, 26. Thousands of fairies, tens of thousands of visitors, and you want the jury to believe that you remember my client? Not just remember him, remember him well? Yes. Well, unless your memory has been jogged by the government, Mr. Rockton, how could you... A little argumentative there. Because I quit my job because of him. That's how. Because that ferry he was on was the last ferry I ever worked. I was down there on 9-11, ma'am. On the island, right next to her. The idea that someone would want to blow her up now? I remember. Don't ask a question you don't know the answer to on Cross. Ask a question you don't know the answer to. <laughs> nice. Okay, closing argument. We live in a dangerous time. I'm gonna assume he got permission to enter the well to talk to the jury. Our enemies used to be overseas. And we could see them in tanks and airplanes. They wore uniforms. And we Yo, that is not proper argument here. But now, we're living on the battlefield. I mean, he's relying on things that are outside of this trial. You gotta be really careful when you make this kind of argument and this kind of appeal to emotion. Ah, I don't think a prosecutor's gonna get away with that. They look like us. They talk like us. They live down the hallway from us. We only find out who they are and the damage they want to do after they've done it. Oh, man. After they've shot up a nightclub. That's not proper. Or up a marathon. Oh, come on, man. You can't bring in facts from other terrorist acts as your closing argument for this particular criminal trial here. That's, that is not proper at all. This is a big gaffe here. Ms. Bell wants you to believe that our government did this. Ask yourself how much money, how much time would it take to convince you to blow the head off the Statue of Liberty? He's making some contradictory arguments here. That man is not a criminal. And law enforcement prevented no crime here. They manufactured a crime. Instead of hunting actual terrorists, your government tried to make a terrorist. They contacted him. They befriended him. It's really unrealistic that these first year attorneys are going to be making the closing arguments here. This is a high profile case. It would almost certainly be uh, their bosses or their bosses' bosses that are making these arguments and handling this trial, not these really, really young attorneys, regardless of the fact if they clerked for the Supreme Court. That just won't apply. They picked a target for him. They built a bomb for him. They made him. Yeah, but he took the act, a totally separate act. I don't, I don't think that defense applies here. I think uh, he has taken the predicate acts, regardless of whether the bomb worked or not, he thought it did. So he had the right mens rea. I don't think the entrapment defense works. I don't think they've really manufactured his particular acts. They may have helped him along, but I don't think that rises to the defense of entrapment here. It's easy to become distracted in a case like this, to become emotional to focus on the wrong things. But this case is about one thing and one thing only. It is about the power of the United States government being used to systematically target and manipulate and incarcerate American citizens because of their religion. I mean, there's been no evidence of that. Their national origin, their color. I mean, she's bringing in outside facts too. But what you have today is even more powerful. You have the power to say no. You have the power to resist. In this courthouse, in this courtroom, in those seats today, you have the awesome power of justice. And there's nothing more powerful than that. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's gonna lose. United States versus Mohammed Fayed. I think he's we guilty. Jury, find the defendant, Mohammed Fayed, guilty. Use of Called it. You had. Do you mind if I sit here? <laughs> Jesus, so morose. You just want a big trial. I told you you were gonna lose. I told you. This isn't TV. <laughs> uh, okay. What did I get? What? You said on the first day, get something. What did I get today? You got beat. And now you gotta get up.
And also, you'll be able to appeal and probably win and cause a new trial because the prosecutor made ridiculous arguments in his closing argument. So, you know, there's always that. There's always appeal. There it is, right there. See it? The mother court. Are we worthy? Yes, I think so. We are. We are worthy. You just handled your own trial as first chair. You're so worthy. Who's worthier than us? Aaron Burr? Please. <laughs> Okay, now it's time to give For the People a grade for legal realism. It was on the cusp of being the most accurate show I've ever seen, but didn't quite make it. It was overly dramatic, you had things happening on a time scale that isn't really believable, but for the most part, they are making semi-reasonable arguments. The things that are happening could actually happen in real life. It is far more accurate than I ever thought it would be. So, at the end of the day, I'm going to give For the People, episode one, an A minus. A shockingly accurate legal procedural from Shonda Rhimes. I can't believe it. You know, a lot of people become lawyers because they think they're bad at math and science. If only they'd learned the right way, there would be fewer lawyers in the world. That's why Brilliant.org created the best interactive app for learning how to problem solve. From basic logic to high school algebra to computer science fundamentals, Brilliant turned learning into a game. If only Brilliant had been around when I was a student, I might not have gone into law and actually done something good for the world. Whether you're a student who wants to get better math grades or a parent who wants their kid to be a scientist, Brilliant can help you learn how. Get better at STEM and actually prevent future lawyers. If you visit brilliant.org slash legal eagle or click the link in the description, you can sign up for free and learn all kinds of things not related to being a lawyer. And as a bonus for legal eagles, the first 200 people will also get 20% off their annual membership. Remember, only you can stop future lawyers. And until next time, I'll see you in court.